done on this so far is is uh, basically this base and this shaft here. Um, the shaft is actually a two-piece construction um, with a, a brass tip over here that's threaded uh, quarter twenty-eight, um, and I did all that on the lathe. And then this end here is O one tool steel and it's ground uh, just under eight millimeters actually and then there's a threaded end up here and it's it's pressed together and in hindsight I probably should have just did a nice fit with some Loctite um, because it seemed it, it was a real fun process getting that pressed in there and uh, feeling good about it um, it went in really hard. <laughs> the press fit that they call out in the plans is two thousandths of an inch, and that seems a little much. Um, but it turned out really nice. I mean, it's, uh, it is, uh, pretty decent. And then the base is, uh, so far, uh, incomplete. Um, I did put the hole through there, and this is where... Uh, this shaft will go in okay and there's a little bit of uh, space there I don't know if you can see that where uh, it should protrude out past so I have posted some of this stuff on uh, Instagram and other places and it, a lot of people probably don't know what it is um, and in, in most cases I wouldn't really know either but um, it's it's specifically for um, dividing wheels on uh, a, a milling machine <clears throat> or a lathe to cut the gear teeth in uh, clock wheels um, so that's that's the whole reason that I'm making it um, to sort of have a, a more manual and old-fashioned way to uh, do that. So I, I do have to finish. Uh, I'm going to, I actually made a slitting saw arbor here um, for the Sherline mill. So that's going to slit these apart. And that's just for rigidity then. I'm going to also make some screws. Um, so in another video I'm going to do some more of the lathe parts um, which is really the rest of the work there's a shaft that protrudes out of here and then another housing and then on here is mounted um, different wheel uh, divisions so if, if we flip through the book here there's kind of shoes like this I'm just going to make different wheel blanks out of 16th inch thick brass. Uh, it's maybe a little thicker than that, maybe about 2 millimeters maybe. Um, and I'm going to cut uh, a certain number of slots in these. So I have them for like 32, 36, 40, just different um, things. So I actually just made this uh, little fixture here. Uh, last week um, and what this is is on each one of these circles I have um, positions indexed for all of those different things uh, all of those different wheel sp spacings tooth counts basically so I'm gonna make a bushing to sit the blank plates in here and lay it down flat and I have a I'm going to have a, a hole drilled in the blank and I'm going to have an index pin and I'm just going to mill a slot and then index it to the next one, mill another slot, index it, mill another slot, and so on until I get um, the number of spacings that I need. And then the whole purpose of that is once it's all assembled, um, there ends up being a, a, a little pin that's actually this piece here this pin then engages in those slots. So there's actually a better picture of it here later in this book. Um, this book I got um, on Amazon, 
I recommend it. It's it's pretty cool. There's the author's name, um, and it actually is a pretty descriptive book on how to make a clock. Uh, it's got plans and everything. So, um, but here's the actual finished mechanism. Okay, so you can see here this is a, a sort of like a dividing plate, and this pin engages. Um, and you would mount your blank wheel over here. So we do actually show some teeth being cut here at some point. I thought, here we go. So here you can see they're lining up the, there's the gear blank, and they're lining up a gear cutter. Um, and here. You can see how they're engaging the teeth. So I think it's a pretty worthwhile project. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm gonna just continue to uh, uh, show the rest of the parts that I'm gonna be making and uh, try to document the whole thing so it, it can be uh, maybe used uh, by other people who endeavor the same stuff. So I look forward to all that. So one of the problems with the um, Sherline mill clearly is space. So I have to have my parts sticking pretty much way out of the end of the vise to uh, come even close to being able to clamp it and be in the range of the mill. So um, I'm set up here to So the lesson that I learned here is lubrication is important, <laughs> even if it's aluminum. Uh, that was causing it to stall out a little bit. I think it was maybe heating up uh, pretty fast and just causing a little bit of extra load for the motor. Uh, these motors can't really deal with too much. Um, otherwise, now that I have the right recipe, it seemed to... Uh, go pretty well. Um, I can take this side out as this side's done now. Um, and then I just have to flip it around and do the other leg. Uh, so there you can kind of see the saw cut. And obviously I gotta clean it off and uh, deburr it before I put it in the other side. So yeah. Not bad. This is actually one of my most used tools is the uh, drill press. Obviously it's not uh, off the shelf like this. I've remade a lot of the parts. I really just, I essentially kept the motor and the chuck and the spindle and all that. Uh, but I remade the table. I remade the base, I remade um, the table clamp in the back, um, kind of to my liking, so I use this thing a lot, and it's, it's pretty nice, I mean it was a $60 drill press, uh, so here I'm basically opening up this, this hole. Uh, to 7.8 millimeters and then I'm going to ream it to uh, 8 millimeters to accept some of that drill rod that I have. So I just set up a 1-2-3 block, it's just kind of a dummy 1-2-3 block and I set it up so that the 
drill is going to go through one of the holes. And I just kind of leave it there. Set my piece on top. We're not using any any kind of clamps or anything and we'll just go for it. And it's a little rough going in, but we're good to go by the time we get to the bottom. Alright, and we're through. And I always like to countersink before I ream. I find that gives a much much better result with the reaming. Uh, the one, two, three blocks are great for this stuff because they're so versatile. Like right now, I just quickly change my height without having to move the table. I'll just add a little chamfer on there. Okay. like the reamer is not going to fit so I have a pretty easy solution for whenever that happens I just take the table um, off to the side and I can go ahead and just prop up this is a machine surface down here so I can just prop up on there um, and ream from there so I'm going to throw a little oil on my reamer there and we're good so there's that whole ream so we're just drilling and tapping a hole over here um, and then this part's basically done So now here I have this piece complete and ready for some other components. Got the slots in there. I finished the holes down here and now it's pretty much uh, ready uh, to continue construction. And I did have to open the holes up after slitting a little bit just kind of run the reamer through them again um, but everything else came out pretty good so next I'll be making some screws for in here and here and possibly the screw down there I might as well make all of them uh, even though they'll be a little bit different and uh, some other parts so all in all not too shabby